One of my favorite shows of all time is Hot Cash, aka Willy Willy. Now, if you if you watch it, it's probably gonna make you laugh. But even till now, I still like it. Like it, it has a kind of inventiveness about it. And you have to remember, this was in the eighties. They didn't have a lot of the tools that we had now, you know, available to us. Um, they didn't have that. And they were shooting on VHS too. So a lot of the things they were creating, even like, you know, like the special effects and things like that, they created that in camera by being inventive. They had, you know, in the frame, in the shot, the, the, the special effects, the makeup, the disappearing, all of that they had to do in the shot. And so that's, it's a kind of indie kind of Nigerian production that we don't see. We don't see that kind of inventiveness so much, so much so anymore, because we, you know, we have all of these tools and that's, you know, like that's the, the I guess the double-edged sword to, to having, all, you know, all this technology. It's, it's a good thing, but it can also make you lazy. And then I would also mention Living in Bondage because I think when it came out, there was nothing like it. Like it literally was its own thing. <laughs> you know, there was, think about it, there was nothing like Living in Bondage before Living in Bondage. And then when it came out, there were like a thousand Living in Bondage after Living in Bondage. So it really was, it really was the, the benchmark, which was what attracted me to the, um, the sequel um, that I, you know, that I, I helped write um, for Ramsey Noah and Child's Play. New Masquerade. Uh, New Masquerade, it was a, it was a sitcom. Um, I don't know who created it, but it used to have Zebudaya, who um, is a legend. And then uh, you also, at, at some point, even had Nkemo was writing on it. Nkemo was, was a writer on it as well. Uh, you, can, you can check that, it checks out. <laughs> he was a writer on it. Um, this was before he even became an actor, like before he, you know, he was acting. Um, but it's, it's, it's a classic show and it, it, it was, I just remember how funny it was. And sometimes I wish these shows would have reruns because that's, these are, these are, they are part of, they are a part of our culture. They are part of our Nigerianness. And somehow you can't find any of these shows anymore unless you go on YouTube and you find clips here and there. But it's, it's so unfortunate that, you know, we don't store these things. And it's, it's sad really. And then Checkmate, um, I would have to add Checkmate. I didn't really get it, to be honest, because I watched it really young. But I, what I just liked was the suaveness of all the characters. Like, they just had a kind of swag. Um, you know, you had the late Francis Agu who was on the show. Um, you know, you had, of course, the legendary Ego Boyo um, who was on the show. You had um, it's just a bunch of RMD, you know, pop from that show, basically. Um, and it was just... A great show, you know, um, with a lot of fantastic actors, and it was created by the late Amaki Gwen. She was really the, you know, like the inventor of prime TV, if you think about it, because she had, she had, um, um, she had Checkmate, and she had Fuji House of Promotion. I think a couple of other shows, and it really was our television back then. There's a movie I really liked, a Hollywood movie I liked, um, growing up in the 90s. I don't know if it was in the 90s or early 2000s, I'm not sure, but I really like this movie. It's called Game of Life. Um, and it was directed by Jetta Amata. And it really was, I, I just remember how different it was um, and how great Stella Damascus' performance as a prophetess in the movie was. But I just remember how, I've, I've actually looked for this movie and I always say that anytime I, I run into Jetta, I'm going to ask him where I can find the copy because it's, like, it's really that good. Um, it made a great impression on me. But, but, but growing up, you know, um, I really admired Nollywood for what it does because, I mean, think about it. Like, we had no representation of us. We had nobody telling our stories. Nobody, literally nobody. So all of these greats... You know, Teko Benson, Jetta Amata, the Amatas, basically, you know, the, uh, the entire Amata family, they were all making films. Um, you had uh, the late Chico Ejiro. Um, all of these guys, what they did was that they gave us something that we couldn't find anywhere else, as far as our stories, as far as our representation. And, and sometimes I wish that um, the new generation of Nollywood filmmakers would do that more, you know, just tell our stories, you know, like, don't be scared. Because they, 
those guys, they were not scared of anything. They had, they were just, they just did whatever, you know, whatever they wanted. If they wanted to put a bird in the sky, they would put the bird in the sky. They didn't care, you know, like they would just do whatever they wanted to do. And I think I miss some of that boldness in Nigerian films of today. Mm. Stunning. Mm. Distinct. Powerful. Glorious, for some reason. I always associate black, at least Mami Waters, black and white. Um, and, um, the, four, the fifth one is it's a little bit of a challenge. I already said distinct, right? So I can't say unique now. Um, I would say real or organic. Organic is the word I would go with, yes. That's what you were thinking. <laughs> Organic, yes.